I. Deep in here. Now today, I'm going to teach you about how nuclear energy works and what it means for you. On March 11, 2011, an earthquake happened in Fukushima, Japan. This earthquake caused a tsunami that destroyed one of Fukushima's largest nuclear power plants. Now, with the destruction of this nuclear power plant, this created one of the world's greatest nuclear disasters. This nuclear disaster raised a lot of eyebrows with nuclear energy and brought up concerns about the safety and welfare of all of those who live around nuclear power plants. Today, I'm going to tell you about the physics of nuclear energy and how it works. It all started in the 20th century with a great physicist known as Albert Einstein. Einstein created one of the world's most famous equations, E equals mc squared. What this equation does is it relates energy to mass and says that they are interchangeable. Mass can be converted to energy, and energy can be converted to mass. This is the underlying principle for nuclear energy and how we harvest it from nuclei and atoms. So let's talk a little bit about how that works. Say I took a bucket of 92 protons and 146 neutrons. Those numbers are specific to the uranium atom, uranium-238, which has 92 protons and 146 neutrons. Now, if I take those protons and neutrons and weigh them all on a scale, they'll have a certain mass. However, if I take the uranium atom, which has the same number of protons and neutrons, weigh that on a scale, you'll see that the uranium atom has less mass than all of the individual protons and neutrons. That's kind of weird that when you stick all of these together, it has less mass than the total product. So what happened to all this mass? Well, that is where binding energy comes in. According to the E equals mc squared equation we talked about earlier, some of the mass of the protons and neutrons got converted into energy to hold all of those protons and neutrons together. Now this doesn't come without problems because when you take two protons and you stick them together, they typically want to repel. However, we just said that when you stick them really close together, some of the proton's mass is converted into a nuclear force, an energy that holds them together. Well, part of the problem is, is that now this combination of protons and neutrons, they all want to repel but are being held together by this binding energy, this nuclear force. And this creates instability in the atom. Now, there are several ways that this instability wants to relieve itself. There are different types of what we call decaying. First off is alpha decay. Alpha decay is when some protons and neutrons are released and a whole other particle is ejected out of the nuclei to try to get it to be more stable. The second type is called beta decay. Beta decay is when a small beta particle is spit out of the nucleus. However, there is a type of decay that doesn't involve spitting something out of the nucleus. This type of decay is known as fission. Fission really only occurs in the very heavy atoms, things like uranium and so on, but not all heavy atoms undergo fission. Fission occurs when this unstable, very large atom splits into two parts. In nature, this spontaneous fission does happen, but it is very rare. And this fission is the underlying premises for how we gather nuclear energy today. Because every time fission occurs, that big nucleus releases a ton of energy. So, how are we able to harness this fission decaying and turn it into energy? Well, that's where the engineers come in. So what scientists have found is that if you take this uranium atom and you throw just one neutron at it, then what that neutron does is it creates enough energy to break that instability and induce a fission decay. And what happens is when the fission decay happens, the uranium atom breaks up into two different elements and ejects more neutrons itself. Now, if you have a big pile of uranium atoms, those neutrons will hit other atoms and then those atoms will break into two different pieces 
and spit out more neutrons. Then those neutrons hit other atoms and those atoms break, spit out more neutrons, and so on and so forth. You can see how this turns into a type of chain reaction where so long as you have stuff to keep feeding the chain, it will just be exponential because more neutrons will be spit and more uranium atoms will be split. And if this is left unchecked, then you can end up with a nuclear bomb, something that has a chain reaction happening so fast, running away, that it explodes. And this is where the primary concern happens with nuclear energy, is that if you have a reactor that is run away, then it will turn itself into a nuclear bomb. However, not all nuclear reactors are runaway reactors because you have different types of criticalities. You have a subcritical reactor, which means that while a chain reaction is occurring, it's not a strong enough reaction to run away into a nuclear bomb. Then you have a perfectly critical nuclear reactor, which means there are just enough chain reactions occurring to allow it to either turn into a runaway or a subcritical. And then you have a supercritical reactor, something that has so many chain reactions occurring, it has the potential to run away into a nuclear bomb. This is where most of our nuclear reactors occur, right at the supercritical level. Because at the supercritical level, while there is the danger of it turning into a nuclear bomb, that is where you get the most energy. The way they control it and stop it from running away into a nuclear bomb is with something called control rods. Control rods are some element that absorb the neutrons, so that way it helps break some of those chain reactions, and they can control those reactions into just how much energy they need. The funny thing about nuclear reactors is that it's not just the uranium creating the heat. I mentioned that the uranium splits off into two elements. Now those elements, those will undergo different types of the decays we talked about earlier, and those decays will produce more heat. In fact, most of the heat of nuclear reactors comes from those secondary reactions created from the split uranium atoms. Now, how do we take that and turn it into electrical energy? First off, the core of the reactor just acts as a heat source. That's all it does. So all of the chain reactions and splitting of neutrons and everything that I just talked about, that just generates heat. That's all we care about is heat. And what we'll do, we'll run a fluid around that core. And the heat of the core will heat up that fluid. From there, the fluid goes into a heat exchanger, which will heat up another fluid. What the heat exchanger does is it isolates the radioactive fluid that cools the core and the fluid that will produce the energy. Now, once the heat exchanger has done its job and all of the second fluid is warmed up, it'll go into a turbine. And the turbine will spin and that will produce the electrical energy that we use today. Now, when you look at a nuclear power plant and you see all of this smoke coming out of it, a lot of people are concerned about the safety and radiation levels of that smoke. Well, that's why the heat exchanger exists. Because first off, that smoke you're seeing, that's just steam. That steam that's bled off from the turbine. And because the steam from that turbine never actually encountered the reactor, that means that that steam is just steam. It's not heavy water, which is a nuclear radiated water. It's just plain old steam. Now, scientists and engineers, they're always trying to make things better. You want your power plant to be more efficient, more economic, create less waste, and you're always trying to upgrade your systems. Now, those systems, those have different categories. We call them generations. I've included a link in the below if you want to learn more about this, but right now we're in generation three nuclear cycles. Future generations will include generation three plus and generation four, which is the iconic ideal of fission reactors. Because generation four, that will be something that's super clean, creates minimal nuclear waste, and produces tons of power at an extremely low cost. Feel free to comment below on what you think. And with that, my name is Teepin. Feel free to check me out on social media or subscribe to my channel. Peace out.